Hey everybody, I'm so excited to share with you my experience playing the Guild of Merchant Explorers. This game has so much to like about it and it reminds me of two games that I've played recently that just do it for me, that just make me feel really satisfied. And it's also got kind of a twist on a really popular genre. So let's jump into it. This game is one to four players and takes 45 minutes to play. It's also super replayable because there are four different maps that players can pick from, and each of those maps has corresponding and unique goal cards. And you're going to select three of them to uh, play with, which I'm just running right into. This game reminds me so much of Kingdom Builder because you have three goal cards that you're getting money for in Kingdom Builder, and here it's the same thing. Um, in this case, though, you are receiving gold for getting there first, which is more. So you receive more if you do that thing, and that's actually reminding me a lot of Welcome to the Moon. They have those kind of goal or objective cards in there, and if you're the first to get to something, you're going to earn more points than if you are second, third, or fourth. Everybody else is going to get a threshold base level of, um, you know, gold for what they do. But that's the three objectives that go along with the maps. And again, there are four really, really cool, super, super replayable. Now. It's still like Kingdom Builder because every player takes their mat in front of them and they get to place out these cubes as they explore. And they place cubes out in the same configuration rules of being next to the start city, which is in the very center of the board on the map I played on. And the other place you can play adjacent to are existing uh, explorer cubes or previously established villages. And those are places that stay from round to round to round. So it's got that same kingdom builder. We flip over a card. This is kind of like a flip and write, but not a flip and write. It's a flip in place. And you flip over the card and everybody simultaneously is going to put down those cubes according to the rules of placement based on that terrain type. And there are four different terrain types. And you just want to explore. You just want to have a good time and place your cubes down. You want to finish particular terrain groupings because those are going to let you place more villages and get more money. That's good. You want to establish your presence in these areas so that people will pay you money. You also want to make trade routes. And that's when you get from one circle city to the other circle city anywhere on the map. You multiply them and that's the money you earn and you place down one of those kind of little cover tokens that says this city can't necessarily be established with another trade route. So you've already kind of spent it, but the other side of it is still open. So there's just kind of like Kingdom Builder written all over this, but not it, it's not a lift. It's just a nice borrow of the flipping feature. Because in Kingdom Builder, every player flips over their own card. And in the Guild of Merchant Explorers, players are simultaneously putting things down on the same exact space. And so it kind of borrows that flip or roll and write feature of a lot of games with the placement rules that comes from Kingdom Builder. I also feel like that exploration aspect of this is so reminiscent of Voyages. And I love Voyages as a print and play, right? As a roll and write. And so I love that feature. You're just kind of going over here and over there and a little bit of everywhere, stopping along the way to discover islands and gold and mountains. And in this case, in this game, you're looking at ruins and you're trying to find these really cool exploration towers that give you super cool payback. But this game grows. Now, you get to play four rounds of placing out cubes, establishing villages, and then clearing your board. And then we start over and do it again, and you're shuffling up the same cards. So there are a set number of cards with the exact same terrain on them, and you are incorporating era one, era two, and era three. And then the last round is one, two, or three. And that's where the game is really super cool. These era cards allow you to get and use unique, asymmetrical, cool, cool, cool cards. <laughs> they let you do some wild and crazy things with your exploration cubes and with your movement into various terrain, whether it's established on the card or not, where it's specific or it's not specific. It's so fascinating. And you get to use those abilities every single round once. And in the last round, you get to pick one of the three that you've already uh, obtained 
and you've got in your player area and you say, I want to use, um, you know, level one, or I want to use my level two one, or I want to use my level three one. Now they don't necessarily get better in one, two, and three, but they're just all really cool. So it makes that level one like really cool because <laughs> it's amazing. And players will simply draw from the top of the investigation deck and they'll just pick one of the two and you get to do it right when you collect it. And then of course, later when it's triggered again, you will get to use it again and then again. So really, really fun, super, super cool feature. I, I just think there's so much to like about this game. And again, it's got that replayability. You just want to jump into it again, like right, right away. Every time you come across a ruin symbol when you're um, driving around in the ocean, you get to flip over a treasure chest card and you just get what's on the other side. And there are tons of things that it could be either end game scoring with multipliers, or it could be just two coins. It could be um, place another cube down wherever you want, which of course has to be adjacent to one of your previously placed pieces, but that could be exactly what you need in a pinch. And so the ruins are really fun. It's kind of like a, a roll of the die. It's like a little bit of a gamble. What am I going to get? But whatever you get is good. It's just good. And sometimes when it's perfect, because it's exactly what you need, wow. I mean, just the coolest thing. I think the Guild of Merchant Explorers offers players such a lovely choice without being overwhelmed with the possibilities. Um, it was fascinating. I'll tell you one thing. I was a little bit slower to figure out how the game worked in the first round or two than Lewis was. But in rounds three and four, I was making really fast turns and being done and waiting for him because I think that complexity just opens up in rounds three and four in a way that for me, I'd selected my strategy and I just like went through and just followed through with it and it worked and things were kind of like lining up for me when in the meantime, Lewis was seeing too many possibilities and he was like, yeah, but it was fascinating to see us kind of like a whoop. It was like an invert. Um, of decision making and strategy, but it still just took us 45 minutes to play. It really does take a short amount of time, um, even with learning and setting up the game, but it's so nice to touch. I love the matte finish on each of the maps and they're beautiful. The iconography is incredibly strong and clear and easy to understand. And I think that it's just, it's just one of those games you want to keep coming back to. It kind of reminds me of my city where you flip over a card and you have to fit that polyomino in your space. And while everyone has the same map, all of a sudden you start to see diverging strategies. And that's the same thing here. We flip over a card and we've got to place our um, cubes, our, our little exploration cubes out on the map, trying to, again, connect um, these trade routes. We are trying to establish villages by completing the same colored region inside of a terrain. And we're trying to just find all the gold, right? That's, that's the whole thing. Go to that sunken ship over here, check out that ruin over there, go to that discovery beacon, those towers in, in the far reaches of this land and have a good time. This game leaves you feeling just delighted. It's fun. And when you count up those points at the end of the game, it doesn't matter because you just had a great time playing it. So a lovely game from AEG. I'm loving it, the Guild of Merchant Explorers.